Hello, it's the Canadian Bagel here coming to you with the next update to the Canadian federal election forecast. So today's a big one because federal candidates were announced or were finalized uh, as of release of this video yesterday. So there is no new candidates. All the candidates that a party is ever going to have are finalized. So the model was updated to reflect how that affects the writings. Obviously, uh, one pertinent example, there is no green candidates in Newfoundland, so they get zero vote there. Because no matter how many people in Newfoundland would want to vote green, there is no candidate for their vote to go to. Combined with a bunch of uh, the polls solidly trending in O'Toole's direction, and you could argue that technically they're not trend. A lot of them aren't trending anymore. Like Main Street's been pretty constant the last three or four days. But my model, since it has an it has inertia to it, four days in a row of the same poll that's really favorable is going to push the model better to O'Toole, if that makes sense. So basically, good polls are always good. They always affect the model. They make it go up for whatever party you're getting the good poll. So let's go over changes. So obviously uh, Yukon is flipped. It is in the conservative column now. It's extremely tight. This could easily flip back liberal. I think it's essentially a statistical tie with a conservative edge. Very close. Very, very close. The Conservatives also sniped the other Liberal seat in Alberta. Really not surprising when you start looking at the Alberta Regionals. There's several pollsters in how polling are the Conservatives well above 60 in Alberta. And yes, last election they got 69. I think my... I mean, we could just check. Uh, I'm forecasting about 63. And a lot of the other votes that the Conservatives lost have went to uh, the People's Party and other, which is largely Maverick, which would be 5.3 like of their percentage. So if you add these up with this, that's almost 69% what they got last election. Or, well, sorry, these three parties, they're other uh, peoples and conservatives together got 72, so it's pretty similar. So if we go back to here. So that's not to be that, or that's to be expected. Uh, Liberals managed to keep their ground in Ontario. It's actually... Ontario is pretty close to flipping to the the darker red color here. Or flipping back. Though that is a bit misleading because, the, as you will see in a moment, the Conservatives are very strong in Ontario now. So it's not a huge lead. It's a narrow lead. It's just... It's more of a two-party race right now, since the Greens couldn't field the candidates in a lot of Ontario ridings, so they're it was really pushed up, and others, other candidates are a lot fewer this election than last one. Or sorry, ridings with other candidates are a lot fewer. In Quebec, the Bloc has picked up a seat from the Liberals. I don't know which one. There's several that are kind of flipping back and forth between the Bloc on a day-to-day -day basis are like within margin of error so it would take a lot of a lot more tinkering than really usefully necessary the last big change is new brunswick is now under 40 percent liberal i think it's like 38 and change and it's very 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 close to the conservatives as we will see in a second bc over here also worth noting is very very close to becoming Manitoba shade here. So, well, O'Toole has a very narrow lead here at 143 seats. This is almost certainly going to get worse for Trudeau. He released his platform today. Does not look like it's moved the needle much. Obviously, it's only been one day. So, we'll see if it does move the needle. Uh, we're rapidly going to hit because next week is basically all lost to debates. So this is... We essentially have like one and a half weeks of campaigning left. And 
if the polls continue the way they're going, even if they hold steady, this model will continue to forecast worse results for Trudeau and better results for O'Toole. Singh and Blanchett are kind of wild cards, kind of depends. So now if we go down here to look at uh, regionals. So the big thing here is the Greens, they could only field about 70 or 240 something candidates or 250 something. Whatever works out, how many other candidates worked out about 75% of the ridings they ran the person in. And unsurprisingly, that has reduced their vote share meaningfully. People's Party couldn't run every single riding, so it reduced their vote share a bit. When I ran it this morning, or, well, not this morning, uh, yesterday evening, before this, this is for a September 1st projection. It's just being posted on September 2nd because that's when it happened. Um, before I updated for missing candidates, this was this People's Party is about 2.7-ish. But they, they're not filling candidates everywhere. They did a pretty good job. I think they're at 311 out of 338. That's not bad for a snap election in a small party. Others obviously lost a lot of ground because of no new candidates or missing candidates from last election. And naturally, liberals and the conservatives were a big beneficiary of this. The conservatives were also beneficiary of favorable polling, pushing them up further. Liberals got a decent rebound because of basically Green and other going bye-bye and those votes getting redistributed. Now, arguably the model isn't super accurate in redistributing other votes because someone who might be other, the Marxist-Leninist party is probably not going to be equally likely to go conservative or liberal. And someone who other Christian heritage is also not likely to be equally likely, but I'll be honest, it's so few votes that I don't think it matters. Mm. So if we look at uh, these graphs here, it's pretty much the same trends. It looks like the People's Party's kind of flattened out. We'll see if this keeps going up, but I will note to People's Party supporters that even a flat line here at 2.2 what is it, 5-5, five, five. very good success. Like, that's a big gain election over election. Whether that turns to seats, maybe in Quebec, depends on where the vote is concentrated in Quebec. That, I do not know. The rest of these are probably too small to win any seats, especially, like, this 3.4 in Alberta looks big, but it's pretty much concentrated in rural Alberta. So, like, good luck trying to beat those 70% margin for the Conservatives. We look here, this liberal graph, just briefly. It does appear. It looks like they might be turning around. Though, again, it's hard to say if this is true or if this is just anomalous because of... Uh, what's the word for this? some favorable polling over the weekend and again some parties not being able to run a candidate every seat we'll know more by sunday on that especially once we start adding a couple more days of polls like if mains like if, for example nanos today showed the conservatives gaining ground and liberals losing ground main street had liberals constant and liberal or conservatives Maybe gaining ground, but probably constant. Regionals tweaked a bit, but overall, average pretty constant. And Main Street also had a similar result, where it looked like the Liberals lost a bit of ground, but the Conservatives are relatively constant. So, we'll see. I will note, uh, so this is at 36.8 for the Conservatives right now, and this is at 33.1 for the Liberals. So the every single poll that was today, there was a it was like I believe a thirty one, a thirty, and a twenty nine for liberals. So this will be inflated my model because of strategic voting and like the long term. But if those poll if polls like that keep coming, 
this will trend down to probably around 32, 31 and a bit. It's a bit tricky to say the exact trend point because obviously other polls will come out and these numbers will change and they're moving targets. But roughly we'll go to like 31 and a half, 32 range. We'll keep trending down that way. If nothing else changes, the bulls just keep pointing the same numbers. And likewise, this conservative number, it's a bit wonkier because we have some 37s and some like 33s coming out on a regular basis. So it's a bit trickier to forecast it. But again, uh, I think or based on my math that I just did on the fly, professional, I know. This will be trending up probably to around the 38 range if nothing else happens. So, assuming the, the arithmetic average of Main Street, Ecos, and Nanos is the actual vote intentions, we will likely see on Election Day Something like a 6 to 7 point conservative lead. Currently they're 3.7. That'll likely open to 6 to 7. And if we pop over here for a second. And we see conservatives have a narrow lead. 30, 139 to 143. And actually this is probably better for this. We have this map here. Lovely, lovely map. If that does open up like that. And the regionals stay roughly how they are. What I'm expecting is minimum. This is minimum change. Pick up on PEI. Two pickups in Newfoundland. Maybe let's go with three. Probably three, because I for, forgot about Labrador. So three in Newfoundland. One, uh, two. Maybe three in Nova Scotia. Probably two. So we're at six. Probably only one more in New Brunswick. So it depends. Like, seven's probably not quite enough to break into the Acadian seats, or like the French speaking seats in New Brunswick, but we'll see. Probably just one. So that's seven. Probably two, maybe three more in Quebec. So ten. Skip Ontario for a second. Probably two more in Manitoba for twelve. Probably two more. There are probably three more, one from each party in BC, and yes, this would be sniping Elizabeth May, and that would probably happen if the Greens are polling around, or running, get around 2% of the vote, and the Conservatives have almost 40. May's probably going to lose her seat to a Conservative, which would be funny. So now we're at, what, that's 15, I think? Well, let's see. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 12, 15, yep, that's 15. And Ontario is a bit of a wild card, but at the numbers we're seeing, and this, it's a wild card because some polls, like Main Street, keep reliably showing a conservative lead in Ontario right now. Some, like Nanos, are reliably showing a liberal lead, and some, like Ecos, just flip day to day. Just kind of a random toss of the dice there. But I could easily see. This 45 to 68, probably tie. Any of you pick up some of the seats, so let's say they pick up three of the seats. And then 55, 55, so 10 seats on Ontario. So 25, this is conservative. This is a conservative estimate. If the conservatives have a 6.1 or 6.5 lead on election day, once the votes are counted. Uh, obviously, New Brunswick would be blue. Ontario, probably hard, hard to say. This would be this color blue, this medium blue, this would be dark blue, this would be probably medium blue still. Maritimes would probably look blue. That was Ocean New Brunswick particularly. And probably pick up a 25 seats here. Additional. That's about 168. That's probably unless the regionals get more favorable to O'Toole is probably the best case scenario for the conservatives right now. Obviously, at 168 seats, it doesn't really take 
much better to win a majority there. You only need two more. But it is very worth noting that 168 seats, while not technically a majority, is very close to a majority. That means you have a budget vote. One Liberal and one NDP are, are away. Oh, budget passes. We'll see how this goes, but it's very, I guess the way to say this, I don't want to put probabilities on it because I hate probabilities and I've mentioned this several times now, but there is a very high chance, extremely high chance, we will see conservative majority government based on the polling, based on the trending. It's not guaranteed. Right now it's just a minority. But if Trudeau does not turn this around in the next 18 days, I th like if the polls stay where they are, pro it's very likely we'll see a conservative majority government. Which, as I said last video, will be a gigantic own goal. If you liked the video, uh, please like, share, subscribe, comment below. I'd love to continue reading people's uh, impressions on their own writings, how their friends are feeling, how their family's doing, how the other people are doing. Maybe some, how like how it looks like the mood in the area. Even feel free to put out your uh, what your thoughts are. Do you think a conservative majority is likely? Do you think Trudeau will be able to turn it around? What can Trudeau do to turn this around? Am I underestimating the NDP? Will the Bloc sweep Quebec? Probably not the last one. Well, let me know. I like reading all the comments. I try to comment on to the ones that uh, I have something to say about. If I don't comment on your comment, I've read it. I just don't always have something intelligent to say. So, hmm. otherwise, hope you all have a good day.